if you log into LinkedIn nowadays, it's like every other post is, you know, hey, I, I lost my job or I was part of this most recent layoff. Um, it's hard to, to really quantify a number. Um, but, you know, I think Morningstar is reporting 90,000 people have been laid off in tech in 2023 already. If you look at unemployment rates, you know, we're saying they're as low as they've ever been since uh, the late 1960s. So there's kind of two sides to the coin. I think the purpose of today's video is about, look, if you feel like you are on the, the chopping block or you have the potential to be laid off at some point this year, what are the things you could be proactively doing You know, when I think of things you can do to help prepare and get ahead of a potential layoff, the first one is going to be obvious, right? It's the one that any financial advisor would say. It's, you know, make sure your emergency savings account is exactly where you want it to be. So where should it be? Um, typically, we would see anywhere from three to six months of your, your fixed expenses. So usually six months, um, you would lean towards the six months if you're a single income household. If you are a dual income household, usually you can get away with three months of expenses because you still have you know, a second income if someone were to lose a job. I would say the caveat to that being, if you're a dual income household, you're expecting someone to get laid off, meaning you are potentially going to be a single income household here in the, the near future. Um, maybe you move that goal post to six months or you know, if you're a single household, um, maybe you move that goal post to 12 months of, of expenses. That's easy for me to say, right? How do you go about doing that though? So there's a couple things you can do. I think the biggest thing would be budgeting. How, how much are you say, how much are you spending every month knowing where your money's going? And if you have to crack down on that a little bit, you know, on the lead up to a layoff, that's something you might have to do. So that you can save more and you know get that emergency savings where it needs to be um, i use personal capital there's mint.com there's a lot of easy ways to do online budgeting nowadays that make it pretty painless so i would highly recommend looking at those then as a last kind of resort um, other levers you could pull on would be you know other savings so think of your 401k automatic savings that come out of your paycheck or if you save into a 529 plan every month or, or every paycheck. Those are other ways that if if there are if there's nothing else you can do to get that income saved, you know, you can decrease those slightly to help you get to your goals. So I, I think you know the first thing when when looking at options to replace your income, hopefully if you were to get laid off there's a severance package involved, right? Um, that helps ease the burden of, of not having a job and maybe you have some income coming through the door still while you are applying. Uh, what I would tell you is make sure you read your severance package um, in depth. Don't, don't skim. Read the entire thing and, and make sure that um, it's advantageous to you. It, a lot of times you may not be able to go negotiate, but it's at least good to be knowledgeable on what exactly the, the severance package lays out. The second thing I look at, and this, you know, this might not be something you would typically think of, but double check your non-compete. Um, if you listen to uh, President Biden's State of the Union, you know, he actually brought this up that last night that there are a ridiculous amount of non-competes out there, and some of them are, are very tying and, and restrictive. So, again, if you if you feel like your job is at is in jeopardy. You know, be proactive and take a look at what your non-compete you signed is, um, because that could limit what you're able to do in the future. Um, and I think the third thing that I, I would point out to look at as far as income replacement would be unemployment. So, you know, that's always an option that's out there. Educate yourself early, though. Like start if again, if you think your job's in jeopardy, start looking now. The number one thing you can do is start being proactive, right? So keep your keep your LinkedIn updated, update your resume, start searching for other jobs. I think most of the time, a lot of the people you you talk to, they say, "Look, that next job is easier for me to land while I, while I'm currently employed." So does not hurt. Again, if if you feel like you could be losing your job, 
Start applying now, start taking those interviews. Do those things today. The other thing that you can do to help land those interviews, network and um, be intentional with your networking, right? So that doesn't necessarily mean just go to networking events and handing out a business card. If you know what job you want and what industry you want to be in and what company you want to work for, make those connections proactively, reach out to those people proactively, schedule a lunch, schedule a coffee, schedule a phone call and start picking their brains on, hey, I know I want to be at this company and I know I want to, I want to be in this role. How do I go about getting there? You know, help take me through the steps from A to Z on what do I need to be doing to, to get to this position? It's, it's easy for me to sit here behind a, a camera, right, and say all of these things. I think the one thing that, that needs to be pointed out, though, is if you lose a job, that, that has a different effect on everyone, right? So no one, no one probably knows how they're going to react losing a job until they have that conversation with their supervisor that says, hey, we're going to have to, we're going to have to cut your position. Then it all sinks in, right? So easy for me to say, start being proactive, apply to a ton of jobs, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to affect everyone differently. So the point is it's okay if you need to take some time to relax and, and just regroup and refocus before you start applying to jobs, because there is a psychology to it, right? And this all, maybe to tie it all back together, the better position you're in financially from an emergency savings standpoint to help replace that income, the pickier you can be in that next job. And that's the financial freedom that you are trying to build up to, you know, on this job search and on this, this journey of a potential layoff. If you have any questions or, you know, you want to talk about your specific situation, please don't hesitate to reach out to, to Schneider Downs Wealth Management. Um, one of our advisors would be more than happy to have a conversation with you.